All right, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to our certificate workshop. Uh, my name is Marnie Hernandez, been with the company over seven years. Um, love what I do. I love training. I love um, helping and learning, right? Um, and that's what it is. It's just constant. You're, you know, we're researchers, uh, travel agents, you know, we provide a service and, and help people. So this is one way to do that, right? We learn about different destinations, different um, vendors, uh, destinations, uh, locations, etc. First to help sell to your customer, you know, Australia, what is there in Australia? Why would I recommend Australia? Well, we're going to teach you that, right? Um, but besides that, okay, then you get a certificate showing you are now a specialist. And then also um, a lot of times we'll get invited to special webinars, lunch and learns, dinners, events, um, fam trips, familiarization trips. And those are when you get invited to go to these properties, go to these locations and experience firsthand what your customers will, is, you know, um, uh, <sighs> will um experience there it is <laughs> all right so uh, again if you're just joining us welcome um so some of them can be 20 minutes long some of them can be 10 hours long okay so we never know um that's why like on saturdays i have alg part 15 uh this saturday we're doing hyatt hotels okay so join us for that and then tomorrow is seaborn cruises fridays are usually our cruise trainings um so if you're joining us, a lot of people will do like split screens. Others will like watch on their phone and then we do take tests. So again, it's kind of fun because we help each other, right? So um, just make sure you're plugged into where you can take the test because you want to keep moving forward, okay? Uh, the uh, Pacific time for the, the uh, vendor training, Pacific time, 5 p.m., correct? Um, so I'll see you there. You're welcome. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into this Aussie specialist. Hopefully you guys are all here again. Um, be sure to watch the, um, the uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, the chat because uh, right here is the calendar, okay? Um, with all the links in here, okay? So if you guys, you know, oh, I don't know where I to go or I don't know what's going on with ALG or yeah. you know, on Seaboard or whatever, it's all right here, okay? So, and also on our um, Facebook page, which you guys hopefully should all be a part of, is our uh, certificate workshop one, which is right here. If not, um, please join it. I will put the link in here for you. And um, copy link. Here we go. Paste. There we go. All right. Um, so right here under, um, here's, uh, it's usually under featured or discussion, but it's right here. Here's our training for the month. And then um, we do this at the beginning of each month. So it has the link right here also. Okay. So that way you can plan ahead. All right. And as I said, it says 13, 14, 15. So the night before I'll tell you what we're doing. Like right now we're doing Hyatt on Saturday. Okay. So just wanted to share that with you guys. So make sure you sign up for this group. Make sure um, if you have any questions, um, uh, we have to answer the questions, but, uh, and then I'll approve you for it, okay? All right, so you're gonna sign in. Once you get signed in, you're gonna go to courses or live training, we'll go to courses, I think it is. Okay, and da, 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 da. all right. Um, so let me know that everybody's here and if you have any questions. Okay. All right. So we're doing, um, we, I think we, we completed or we're still in the process of introduction. Okay. Let's see. So again, there's, there's, um, yeah. So right here, so you're going to get here. So as you see, we did three of them already. Okay. We're right here to geography and transport. So again, if you're brand new, um, you could probably catch up with these. And as I said, they're right here on my YouTube channel, right here, um, in case you know you need help with the test. Okay, um, I'll put my YouTube channel in here. Okay, um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let me know that everybody's ready to go. So as you see, we've got these to go to, and then you earn, you know, again, points and, and um, promotional stuff and the certificate, et cetera, okay? All right, 
So we are 60% the way done with introduction, okay? Um, we still have then the uh, other portion. All right, so we're gonna hit, hit launch. And it should take us into geography and transport. Again, sometimes if your pop-up blocker's on. Also, always, 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 always remember, brand new agents here, um, whenever you are registering, whenever you're talking, you know, with, with the company and stuff, right here, quick start documents. We are always, Archer Travel is the agency, okay? Just remember that, Archer Travel, their phone number, IATA number, you're going to learn to memorize this. And then anytime you deal with the cruise line, this is the phone number, okay? So very important to remember that. What do I put for our agent? Agent is you. Agent C is always Archer because we're working under their licensing, their umbrella, okay? So just keep that in mind for any new people here. Again, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you guys. And uh, hopefully you'll have fun learning with us today, okay? So geography and transport, let's go ahead and get started. Bum, bum, bum. And again, if you have any questions, make sure you put it to everyone in the chat box because in case I'm reading and stuff, um, you know, they can answer. Okay. Because again, we it's teamwork. We work together. All right. So welcome to Australia's geography and transport course. In this course, you'll learn about Australia's size, geography, and the travel options available to your customers. At the end of this course, you'll be able to advise international travelers on the visa and custom re customs requirements to enter Australia. Yes, Mary, I think you can join. Um, it should let you. Yeah, so you should be able to join um, and then just catch up on the other three. In some courses, it does not allow you to, but this one I think should allow you to. So, um, okay, so ad advise international travelers. You're welcome. Um, on the visa and customs requirements, okay? You're gonna learn about that. Um, explain the transport options available for your customers. So again, how do they get around? And then you're gonna learn to plan itineraries that account for travel distances and time. So if you have somebody on a short trip or a long trip, let's you know help them, okay? So let's get started. All right, so traveling to Australia. This is Aussie Specialist Team Master. This map displays the approximate flying times to Australia from locations around the world. All right, so you see here, so U.S. to Australia, 14 hours from Europe, 11 hours. So, you know, maybe you want to take a picture of this. Could be a test question. I don't know how we're supposed to, like, memorize them, but, um, <laughs> but just so you know, um, it looks like the shortest is, of course, New Zealand, and the longest is London, okay? All right, um, continue. All right, gateway. So international travelers can fly into and out of Australia using one of these international gateways. All right, so you have Darwin here. I don't know if it opens up, sometimes it does. Okay, uh, Carnes, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, and Perth. Okay, pretty big country there. All right. Many airlines fly from North America to Australia direct or with a transit stop along the way. No matter where they are traveling from, your clients have many options that are spoilt for choice. So the arrival city, Sydney, um, direct flights come from Los, A Los Angeles, San Francisco, Vancouver, Honolulu, Dallas, Houston. Um, for Melbourne, they have direct from Los Angeles, San Francisco, Honolulu, Dallas, and then Brisbane, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Vancouver. All right, visas. So I'll see specialists, so beautiful, look at that. All international visitors to Australia do need a visa with the exception of Australian and New Zealand passport holders and permanent residents. So on arrival, international visitors will be asked to produce their passport with the electronic visa and an incoming passenger card issued on their flight. Proof of sufficient funds for the period of stay and or onward tickets may also be requested. Here you have international tourist visas generally issued for up to three months stay. Different regulations and procedures apply independently or apply, sorry, depending on the visitor's country of origin. 
Agents and their customers should check the Department of Home Affairs website and the website of their closest Australian embassy or high commission for, for details. So again, you know, as you know, um, when traveling overseas, always check the most up-to-date information, you know, are vaccines needed, passports needed, visas needed, you know, they could change on a daily basis, okay? Uh, working holiday visas are available to international travelers from age 18 to 30 from participating countries. Applicants who meet certain requirements can work in Australia for up to 12 months. After 12 months, travelers may be eligible to apply for a second or third working holiday visa after completing a prescribed minimum period of specified work. For further information on visas, including a list of countries participating in the Working Holiday Visa Program, visit the Department of Home Affairs website. All right. And last is Australia's electronic visa system does not require international travelers to have a visa label placed in their passport. When people check in to fly to Australia, airline staff will use their passport to electronically confirm that they have authority to travel to Australia prior to boarding the aircraft. All right, uh, traveling to Australia. So international tourist visas are generally issued for a three month stay. True or false? So our first test question, what do you think? True, True or false? The international True. visas are generally issued for a three month stay. Say True. 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 That is correct. Very good. Um, well done. International tourist visas generally issued up to three months. However, always check with the Department of Home Affairs for more information. How big is Australia? Huge. No. <laughs> it is important to properly <clears throat> understand the size of Australia. Australia is the world's sixth largest country, despite having a population of only 26 million people. Also, the world's driest and flattest continent and the only continent to be contained in a single country. All right, so see that? Um, compared to the United States, okay. Um, Australian mainland features um, or mainland measures 4,000. Um, can we go back to courses, especially? Yes, all the time. You'll be able to access them, yes. Um, and then again, you can watch the recordings. Okay, Australian mainland measures 4,000 kilometers, which is almost 2,500 miles from east to west, 3,200 kilometers, 2,000 miles north to south. Distances and travel time between the cities and major destinations are significant, making them an important consideration when planning itineraries for your customers. All right, here it is compared to Europe, okay? So, do do do. Um, Australia, Australian mainland measured again. Oh, we already went that. Okay, important. Okay, so there it is compared to Europe. Okay, here it is compared to Asia. Wow, big. Look at Asia, huge. All right, this is Japan, <clears throat> China, China. All right. So it is important to understand the size of Australia, um, the sixth largest um, country, uh, despite the population of 26 million people. It's also the world's driest and flattest continent and the only continent to be contained in a single country. Okay. That is it, right? Yep. Okay. All right. How about flying? So domestic and regional airlines, because of the long distances involved, flying is a great way for a time press of visitors to travel around Australia. Domestic regional airlines operate services throughout Australia. The map below shows some common flying routes, routes, routes. Okay, so woo, 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 flying all around. Again, how long does it, what's the longest is from Perth to Sydney, it looks like, right? And the shortest route is probably Melbourne right there. Okay. All right. How about taking the train? That's always fun. We did that in uh, Paris to London. Australia's uh, long distance rail journeys through beautiful and untouched regions are ideal for visitors. Two iconic rail journeys are the Indian Pacific and the Gone. 
It's uh, easy to plan an itinerary using the range of flexible economical um, rail passes available from Journey Beyond. You have the Indian Pacific, takes visitors across Australia between the Indian Ocean in the west and the Pacific Ocean in the east via Adelaide. It's a three-night journey from Perth to Sydney or vice versa. Okay, there you go. The GON travels through the center of Australia from Adelaide to Darwin or vice versa via uh, Alice Springs. Two-night journey takes visitors through rural farmland, the red earth of the outback, and the greenery of, on the, of the top end. Sorry. All right, so there you go. So you've got the two different routes, okay? So remember that. Coach travel. Okay. Like buses. Reliable network of coach routes, links, towns, and major cities throughout Australia. Variety of coach passes are available to visitors, making coach travel an inexpensive option. Okay. You have escorted coach tours. Um, popular way to explore Australia, coach tours to suit all types of travelers from energetic young backpackers to more relaxed retirees. Everything is organized um, on an escorted tour. Accommodation meals are often included, making escorted tours a cost-effective travel option. Escorted coach tours are particularly appealing for travel in remote parts of the country, such as the Kimberley region, where some travelers may not be comfortable navigating themselves. All right, and then self-driving. Okay, so self-driving in Australia is an excellent destination for road trip enthusiasts, an extensive network of well-maintained roads. Uh, there are also many unsealed or dirt roads to beautiful rural destinations for more adventurous travelers. Many iconic driving routes allow visitors to experience Australia up close while traveling at their own pace. All right, so you can hire cars, okay? It's easy to hire a car in Australia. Reservations are a must, especially in peak holiday periods. Interstate one-way rentals are available, but these may incur drop-off charges if minimum rental requirements are not met. You have customers generally need to be age 21 or over and must produce a valid driver's license. It's recommended that drivers from non-English speaking countries obtain an international driver's license to avoid any difficulties. International travelers should note Australians drive on the left-hand side of the road with the steering wheel located on the right-hand side of the car. Speed limits vary from state to state, but generally around 50 kilometers per hour or 31 miles per hour in urban areas and 110 kilometers per hour or 68 miles per hour on motorways. Major cities often have toll roads that collect fares electronically and hire car company will explain to customers how this works. We have camper vans. <clears throat> Traveling by camper van is a popular way of exploring Australia that can also be cost effective as transport and accommodation costs are combined. Camper vans range in size from two to six berths and may, many come with cooking facilities allowing travelers to enjoy an, um, in, inexpensive meals in stunning locations. It is important to note that in Australia, camper vans must be parked in a designated holiday park campsite overnight. And again, you guys probably know this, but just uh, to refresh you, um, holidays is considered vacations in your European area, right? Australia, et cetera. So they call vacations holidays. All right. Um, so they're great facilities um, uh, across the country, allow camper vans to connect to external power source. These facilities also allow visitors to meet other travelers, share their stories with them, some camper van companies even allow overnight stays in unique locations, such as wineries and vineyards. You have off-road outback driving. Okay, so um, right here, plenty of opportunities for off-road driving in Australia, particularly in the outback. However, previous experience is highly recommended. In fact, some car rental companies will only rent four-wheel drives to customers who can show that they have driven these vehicles before. Okay, so driving distances listed below some distances, okay? So Adelaide, Dallas Springs, by road. Again, I don't know if there's gonna be a test question, but I don't know how we're supposed to remember all this, right? All right. Ba -ba -ba. Getting around Australia. Okay, which flight dura duration is correct? 
Um, Sydney to Uluru is five hours or Sydney to Uluru is 3.35 hours or 1.3 hours. What do you think? 1.3. 1.3. I thought it was 3.3. Anybody else? So we have two different ones. Candace saying 3.3. Anybody else? Got 22 of you on here. Okay, a lot of them are saying 3. 3.3. Yeah, 3.35. That's correct. All right. So everybody got that? Very good. Teamwork. All right. Which statement is correct? You must be 25 years old to hire a car in Australia. Self-driving is not a practical way, practical way of seeing Australia or Australians drive on the left side of the road. Australians drive on the left side. Okay, let's try that. That is correct. Very good. Australians drive on the left side. All right, summaries. We finished our first part. You can now advise travelers on the visa and custom requirements to enter Australia, explain the many transport options available for your customers, and then know how to account for travel distances when creating an exciting itinerary for your clients. So a summary, Australia is a big place. Careful planning ensures customers will get the most out of their stay. Australia is easy to get around, whether by air, by rail, or by road. Australia offers many itinerary possibilities. Check out the itinerary section in the Aussie Specialist website for inspiration. All right, so congratulations. You've now completed your portion of the geogra geography and transport course. You now um, know about the geography, the climate, the travel options available to your customers. In the next course, you're gonna learn the tips and tricks to build itineraries for your clients, Australians Adventure, Australian Adventures. And you got a badge, yay. All right, so you know these badges and stuff, sometimes they post them on their websites, on your email. You know, if you um, are doing an Australian um, quote, maybe put this on your email um, to them. Um, click the back button to continue. All right, so congratulations, everybody. Now we'll move on to the next course. Okay, good work. Do you want to continue? Yes. All right, so our next course is da, 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 building an itinerary. Okay. So what are we going to give them for a choice of travel, okay? So let's start the course. All right, so welcome to the building of an Australian itinerary course. In this course, you'll learn some tips for building an Australian itinerary. You'll also have the opportunity to complete a few scenario activities and practice your new Australian itinerary building school, skills. At the end of this course, you'll be able to create exciting itineraries that match the needs of your customers. You're going to learn how to identify the different types of accommodation options available. And you're going to consider Australia's climate when building the perfect itinerary. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, where are we going to put our customers? Well, Australia offers accommodations to match the needs of all your customers, no matter what their preference or budget. Accommodation across the country is generally of a very high quality for the luxury traveler. There are world-class hotels in the cities and luxurious lodges in regional areas. Here is an overview of the accommodation options. All right, you have boutique accommodations. Australia has many boutique hotels. Some are themed to showcase Australia's art of history. Many offer an intimate way to relax. You have eco lodges designed to have minimal impact on the local environment. For this reason, many of Australia's eco lodges are located in the most pristine natural environments. You have farm stays, okay, offer the chance to stay on a rural property. Many offer a high standard of food and accommodation with the option of sleeping in a farmhouse or other accommodations such as self contained cottages, shears, quarters, and bunk houses. Um, hostels, anybody stay in a hostel? I did in Amsterdam. All right, inexpensive hostels, common near iconic locations and can also be found in some remote areas. Australian hostels are generally well known for being a, a, a good standard. 
All right, you have service apartments found throughout Australia, both in the cities as well as regional locations. These typically include facilities where travelers can cook their own meals and in-room laundry, as well as bedrooms separate from the main living area. These are particularly popular with families or those that are staying in a location for a longer stay. Houseboats and yacht charters. Staying on a houseboat is a great way to enjoy major Australian waterways, such as the Murray and Hawkesbury Rivers. Yacht charters are popular in idyllic uh, coastal locations, such as the Whitsunday Island. Luxury Lodges of Australia, a collection of independently owned and operated luxury lodges and camps offering memorable uh, premium experiences in some of Australia's most inspiring landscapes. These lodges include wilderness havens, vineyard retreats, dining destinations, island hideaways, and luxurious outback camps. Each lodge offers guests outstanding experiences connected to the location, whether that be snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef or getting up close to Australian wildlife in a luxury wilderness camp. Luxury standards are set very high with attentive service and delicious regional food and wine, a common thread linking each of the lodges in the collection. You can visit this website to learn more. And then how about uh, camping, okay? Um, oops. That's right, right? Uh, yep, okay, so now camping. Most of Australia's national parks have designated camping areas with fees varying from park to park. Many privately run campgrounds also available. Luxury camping or glamping operators combine a nature-based experience with five-star service and comfort. They usually accommodate small numbers of guests and offer tours and gourmet meals. And then you have walking huts and lodges. So walking um, journey operators combine quality food and wine with access to exclusive lodging facilities, including wilderness, safari campsite, eco lodges, and historic homesteads. All right. <clears throat> the climate there. Okay. How is the weather? Australia's enormous size means the climate varies significantly across the country. About 40% of Australia is within tropical zone, north of the Tropic of Capricorn. Other areas are classified as temperate. Select each zone on the map below to learn more about Australia's climate zone. All right, so Darwin is wet and dry tropical, well-developed dry season with one or two rainy seasons all months um, all months are warm or hot, okay? That's in Darwin. Temperate marine, okay? Um, numerous rainy days in all seasons with moderate uh, total precipitation, higher precipitation in highland areas, warm summers, and cool winters, okay? So that's that area. Dry uh, subtropical, okay, over here by Perth. Hot, dry summers, cool, moderately rainy winters. Is that here? Can't keep tab on this. Okay. Okay, this is Adelaide then, right? Is that all right? Sorry. Semi-arid mid-latitude. Light precipitation, warm and hot summers, cool and cold winters. Right up here. Uh semi-arid tropical light precipitation, rapid evaporation, all months warm or hot. Participation. Okay, did I do that wrong? Hot and arid, ne ne negligible <laughs> precipitation, rapid evaporation, all months warm and hot. Okay, I think we hit them all. Okay. Da, da, da. Did we? Oh, here. Numerous rainy days in the season with moderate precipitation, higher precipitation, warm summers, and cool winters. Are these the ones that I didn't hit? Sorry, I'm just trying to, okay. All right, how about temperate zone? Okay, so the temperate regions have four seasons as described below. All right, so summer is usually December through February. Many outdoor activities and festivals take place in the summer. So it looks like it's opposite of ours, right? This is when Australia's beaches come alive, expect very hot daytime temperatures in the red center of the country. You have autumn, March through May, very comfortable season to visit most places in Australia. The winter 
is June through August, okay? Australia's winter is re relatively mild compared to those of many countries in the Northern Hemisphere. Temperatures in the red center are low at night and during the early morning, but mild throughout the day. Snow can be found in the snowy mountains in New South Wales. And then the spring, very comfortable season to visit most places in Australia. Okay, so spring is September through November. So it's kind of like the opposite of what we have, right? All right, tropical zone takes in uh, North Queensland, including Carnes, Port Douglas, and Whitsunday. The top end of the Northern Territory, including Darwin, Kakadu, and Catherine, and the Kimberley region in Western Australia's Northwest, including Broome. Tropical zone has two seasons, tropical and then the dry, okay? Tropical, November to March. Otherwise referred to as the wet or green season, customers can expect very hot, humid weather during the season, characterized by sudden downpours and storms, usually in the late um, afternoon. Flashes of lightning, rolling thunder. These storms are amazing sights in themselves. Visitors can also enjoy gushing waterfalls and lush vegetation. Tropical summer coincides with stinger season in the northern part of the country. Stingers are a type of venomous jellyfish. Swimming outside netted beach areas is not recommended. And then the dry season is April through October. This is the perfect time to visit Northern Australia. Travelers can expect beautiful sunny days, warm temperatures, very little humidity, and best of all, no stingers during the dry season, so it's safe to swim in the sea. And then temperature guide, here's a guide to the average maximum temperature in our major cities, okay? So... Again, 79, July. So again, I don't know how to remember all this, but if you want to take a look, let me you guys may have good memories. <laughs> all right, so building tips for an itinerary. When planning your client's trip to Australia, take the time to understand what they want. Consider asking the below questions and come prepared with tips and tricks to make it happen. So you have the Australian summer. When would you like to travel? So here's examples of factors your customers will need to consider if traveling to Australia during the summer months, December through, eight, uh, through February. Australian Christmas holidays can be a very busy period. Ensure that you pre-book accommodations, experiences, cars, and camper vans. It will be extremely hot in the Red Center, which is Alice Springs and Uluru. This is the wet season in the tropical north. Very hot and humid, but also green and lush. Be aware that this is stinger season in the tropical north, northern Queensland, Broome, and Darwin, and ocean swimming is not recommended unless in a protected area or if wearing a stinger suit. This is the perfect time to visit the southern parts of Australia. Okay, so keep that in mind. The Australian winters. Oop. Blah. Okay, when would you like to travel? Well, here's an example and factors for your customers to consider traveling during the winter months, June through August. Australia's winters, mild in comparison to that of the Northern Hemisphere. Temperatures will be comfortable in the Red Center, through, though chilly at night. It's an off-peak holiday period, so expect fewer crowds. This is a dry season in the Northern region, still very warm and low rainfall and humidity. This is the most popular time to visit the north of Australia, so ensure everything is pre-booked. And spring and autumn are fantastic times to travel in Australia with pleasant weather and fewer crowds outside of school holiday periods. They have special events. <clears throat> so were you thinking of traveling for a specific reason? Aside from the weather, your, your customer may have other reasons for visiting different parts of Australia at specific times. For example, uh, nature events, whale watching, bird watching, turtle nesting and hatching. How about music or cultural festivals? How about sporting events, surf carnivals, and art exhibitions? All right, so if you have somebody that's interested in them, you may want to recommend Australia. Special interest. What would you like to see and experience during your holiday? Well, if your customer, customer is interested in wildlife, do they want to experience great food and wine? Or are they eager to explore the beaches? Does a trip into the magical outback appeal to them? Or do they want to do this all in one trip? A variety of activities and tours available in Australia present a great opportunity to cross-sell and give added value to your customer while making more commission. 
So don't forget to recommend that your customer pre-book day tours, excursions, and attractions. As mentioned previously, this is particularly important during busy periods, such as the Australian school holidays and Christmas period. Your customer will appreciate not having to spend valuable holiday time making these arrangements when they arrive at their destination. Module two and three presented the sightseeing highlights of all eight Australian states and territories in Australia. So you should now be able to match what your client wants with the appropriate destination. First time visitors, okay. Have you traveled around Australia before? If your customer hasn't traveled around Australia before, they may wish to prioritize iconic destinations such as the Sydney Opera House, the 12 Apostles, Uluru, and the Great Barrier Reef. This is not to say, of course, that they wouldn't want to enjoy other parts of the country too. Okay, so just check it out, ask them what they want to see, and then be able to offer, um, you know, recommendations. How much time do you have? If your customer has a limited amount of time, you will need to carefully plan their itinerary to ensure that they have a good experience. This may mean sticking to one or two destinations instead of trying to see everything in the short space of time. Australia is sometimes referred to as a once-in-a-lifetime destination by international tourists. However, travelers return to Australia many times as it cannot be experienced in its entirety during a single visit. And there are many great things they can see and do in Australia. And once you have explained this to your customer, they may even want to stay longer than originally planned. And then travel options. How would you like to get around Australia? Does your customer want to drive? Are they interested in rail journeys or coach tours? Self-driving is a popular, easy way to experience Australia. Uh, there are driving itineraries to suit most travelers' needs and wants, and they can be a great way to combine destinations. If your customer prefers to have things organized for them, a coach tour could be the best choice. And you have learned about um, some of Australia's iconic train journeys, which are also a great way of combining destinations. All right, Sydney Rock and Reef. All right, so your customer has never traveled to Australia before or has limited travel experience traveling around Australia and is interested in seeing some of the iconic sites such as Sydney, Uluru, and the Great Barrier Reef. While they want to do as much as possible, they would like to relax in a few days at the end of the trip, perhaps in a beach destination. They have a keen interest in food and wine as well as nature. They have approximately two weeks, 14 days for this trip, so you have Sydney and Cairns are both international airports. In order to complete this itinerary, your customer must take two international flights and then drive from Cairns to Port Douglas uh, return. Okay, so there are 3.35 uh, hours. The flight to Cairns is 2.5, and then the drive is about an hour each way. Okay. So before you begin, please review information about each location. So Sydney... Uh, climb the Sydney Harbour Bridge, tour the Sydney Opera House, take the ferry to Manly Beach, and soak up the history of the Rocks Precinct. Carnes bah, 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 is one of the gateways to the Great Barrier Reef. Carnes Esplanade is lined with bars and restaurants and has a saltwater swimming lagoon. Uluru, bah, 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 dramatic sunrises and sunsets, dine under the night sky full of stars, the range of accommodations is available at the Ayers Rock Resort, and experience the Aboriginal culture of the Red Center. And then location, Port Douglas, um, relaxed beachside village full of great restaurants, cafes, and boutiques. Chill out on a beautiful four-mile beach located about one hour north of Carnes International Airport. All right, plan your customer's trip. Over the next activities, you will plan your customer's trip. What city would be best for your client to arrive at? Sydney, Carnes, Perth, or Melbourne? Okay, so which city would be best to get bring, bring them in first? I, say, I think Sydney, but what do you guys think? Sydney? Anybody, anybody? Sydney. 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 That's what I thought. Okay, we'll try it. That is correct. It'd be best city for your client to arrive in Australia. Okay. 
Now it says plan the order of the trip. All right, so your client will be visiting four specific locations. Now that you have chosen the rival city, what would be the most appropriate um, order in which to visit? All right, so now we have to kind of break it out. Okay, so they're there for two weeks. So um, they're at Sydney first, okay? So four specific. So uh, one to five days, three days, three days. So I'd probably say the one to five, yeah. Well, why does it have four days? Do we have to count them? I mean, <laughs> yes, three, four days, three days. Okay, 12, 13, 14, 9, 10, 11. This is kind of confusing, huh? Six, seven, eight. I think it'd be Sydney, Uluru, Cairns, and Port Douglas, right? I'm guessing because that's how they kind of suggested with the airports and everything. What do you guys think? Try it. Anybody okay with that? Let's try it. Correct. Yes, what she said. <laughs> exactly. Yay. Thank you. Wait, hold it just a moment. All right. All right. No worries. Okay. okay. It won't drag. <laughs> um yeah you just I think you do um like how did I do well you did it already but yeah I think you okay. left click it and then try to pull it okay I got it okay perfect okay everybody good let me know do, do, do. for a call sorry you have there we go. My my fingers don't work. You have time. Okay, there we go. Okay. Next, explore excursions. Okay, this is the fun part, right? Four great excursions that could your client um may wish to experience. So you have uh Kata Tijuta Olga's. Okay. Olgas are made up of 36 dome-like formations. There's a variety of walks to be enjoyed, stretching from 600, um, I don't know if that's my meal, meters, to over seven kilometers. This is a half-day trip from the Ayers Rock Resort, which means you can book another trip or your customer can simply relax. You have the Hunter Valley. <clears throat> Take some world famous wines in a beautiful setting, two and a half hours from Sydney. It's a day trip, which arrives back in Sydney. Okay, you have the Great Barrier Reef, definitely a must do. Cruise to the Outer Reef for a day of diving and snorkeling amongst the beautiful coral and tropical fish. This day trip can depart from either Carnes or Port Douglas. You have Blue Mountains. All right, World Heritage Area, stunning scenery, waterfalls, eucalyptus. Uh, eucalypt forest, charming villages full of art galleries and great restaurants. This can be a day trip which arrives back in Sydney. All right, so now you get to match each excursion to each of your customers' desires. Wine tasting was not Hunter Valley, right? Yeah. Um, stunning scenery. Um, Blue Mountains. Blue Mountains. Great Barrier Reef and the Olga. Carnes was the Great Barrier Reef. Okay, and then Olga's is Uluru. Everybody yeah. got that? Let's try it. Correct. All right, you guys got that? Make sure. I got lost. <laughs> I cannot move. <laughs> so I guess. All right, let me know once you get it. Oh gosh, I'm lost. Dang, checking flights. My uh, son's getting married in Hawaii, and I still haven't got my flight since March. Oh, all right, you good? Go ahead. Um, I got lost. I'm do redoing everything. Okay. Take if you want, take a picture and then uh 
Okay. Take okay. It. Got it. Thank you. All right. Let's review itinerary. Okay. Sydney, rock and read itinerary. Look again, how beautiful, right? All right. The scenario you have just completed is a classic example of an itinerary that takes in Australia's most famous icons. It is a good option for the first time visitors and travelers who wish to see these famous icons. So review your customer's finished itinerary below. All right, so day one through five, we're gonna send them to Sydney, right? Start off Sydney, must do's. So again, you may wanna take a picture of this to be able to help. Hey guys, look at this amazing, you know, itinerary I can set up for you. You have the Sydney Harbor Cruise. You have the Sydney Harbor Bridge that they can climb. Sydney Opera House tour or a performance. They have a ferry to Manly Beach. They can walk from Bondi to Bronte Beaches, a uh, surfing lessons, day trip to the Blue Mountains, and wine tasting in Hunter Valley. Okay, day five through eight, Red Center, Uluru, Alice Springs. Uh, see the sunrise and or sunset. They have Uluru Outback Dining, Sounds of Silence or Tali Ruhu. <laughs> Kata Juta, okay, the Olgas. Example, Valley of the Winds Walk. They have Kings Canyon Rim Walk and then Historic Alice Springs. Okay, so sounds like a lot of activity there, right? Okay, you have the Great Barrier Reef, definitely a must do. Um, you have the Great Barrier Reef Cruise, Daintree Rainforest, Coranda Scenic Railway and Sky Rail. And then beachside villages such as Palm Cove and Port Douglas. Hurdles. All right. Wild about wildlife. Yes, I am. So your customers are nature lovers and want to experience Australian wildlife um, in its natural habitat. They have heard Kangaroo Island is good for this and have always wanted to spend some time in Tasmania. They would like to visit Melbourne and they like exploring the cultural aspects of the cities they visit and enjoy good food and wine. Uh, they have approximately two weeks, okay? So note, they will fly from into Adelaide and out of Hobart. International travelers will need to travel via Melbourne or Sydney to connect with their return international flight. So you've suggested your customers travel to Kangaroo Island by coach and ferry and then return to Adelaide by air. So you have the coach and ferry, Adelaide to Kangaroo Island, which is two hour coach and then a 45 minute ferry ride. The flight Kings Cove, Kangaroo Island to Adelaide is 30 minutes. Then you have Adelaide to Melbourne, one and a half hour, one hour and 20 minutes. And then Melbourne to Hobart, 1.15 hours. Um, I'm sure they do, Leah. If not, I'll find things for you. Okay. And usually you can Google, but um, I'm sure there's um, marketing material here for you. All right. So locations, before you begin, review each um, information of each location. So you have Kangaroo Island, experience a zoo without fences. How fun is this? Look at that. Bring a glass of wine and drop with the kangaroos. Except some of them can be scary, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, where you will spot kangaroos and koalas in their natural habitat, explore beautiful beaches, dine on the delicious kangaroo island uh, produce. Adelaide, explore the cultural hub of North Terrace before heading across the river to North Adelaide's cafes and restaurants. Catch a tram to Glenel and take in a dolphin um, watching cruise. All right, Hobart. Enjoy the Salamanca uh, Market on a Saturday before heading to the Museum of Old and New Art, Mona, to take in the eccentric artworks, get close to wildlife, including Tasmanian devils at the Bonarong Wildlife Sanctuary. And then Melbourne, uh, explore Melbourne's hidden laneways with their quirky boutiques and cafes before sampling produce at the Queen Victoria Market. Catch a tram to Bayside St. Kilda and take in a game of Aussie rules football at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. All right, so plan your customer's trip. Over the next activities, you will now plan your customer's trip. So if your customers are international travelers, which are two, uh, which are the two most convenient international gateways before flying into Adelaide. 
Sydney Cards Hobart Melbourne. Sydney Melbourne. and Melbourne. Let's check it out. Sydney and Melbourne. Everybody agree? Try it. That is correct. Very good, Candace. Thank you very much. Okay, got that guy. Sydney and Melbourne is that two most convenient gateways. All right, now plan the order of the trip. All right, so customers visiting four locations. Once your customer lands in Adelaide, what is the most appropriate order to visit each location? Okay, so Adelaide first, right? Let's say a customer lands in Adelaide, so that would be day one through three, right? Hobart probably last, right? What do you think? Yeah. Kangaroo Island, uh, Melbourne, and Hobart, I think. Okay, let's try that. Everybody agree? We will check it out. Submit. Correct. Very good. Okay, everybody got that? Adelaide, Kangaroo Island, Melbourne, and Hobart. All right, what excursions are there? Okay, there's three excursions your client might like to experience. Phillip Island, which is less than two hours from Melbourne, is Phillip Island. Home to the abundance of wildlife. Watch the nightly penguin parade where hundreds of little penguins emerge from the sea. How cute. Barossa. One of the world's top wine tourism destinations is only a one-hour drive from Adelaide. Explore the history and culture of the region, as well as blending your own wine at a famous winery. And then Bruni Island. A short drive and ferry from Hobart takes you to Bruni Island, a place of abundant wildlife, delicious seafood, stunning scenery, and beautiful coastline. So match each excursion to each of your customers' desired uh, destinations, Phillip Island, Bruni Island, and Barossa. So Hobart will be Bruni Island, I think. Barossa is Adler. Phillip Island is Melbourne. Oops. Is that it? Oh, no. no, sorry. Phillip Island is Melbourne. And then Bruni Island is... Bruni Hobart. Island is Hobart, yeah. All right. Everybody good? Bruni, Barossa, and Phillip. Very good. You paying attention. Yes. All right. Review itinerary. Wild, wild about wildlife. Oh, cute. Scenario, you have just completed a classic example, classic example of an itinerary that takes in Australia's wildlife in the natural habitat as well as cultural city aspects and good food and wine. Now review your customer's finished itinerary below. So you're gonna go to Adelaide and Kangaroo Island, okay? So must do's, gourmet food at Adelaide Central Market, cafe and bars in North Adelaide, uh, Glenig beaches and dolphin swimming cruise. You have Kangaroo Island, a true zoo without fences. Sea lions on the beach, koalas in the trees, kangaroos hopping everywhere, enchidnas scurrying along the roadside, and then honey farms, boutique wineries, and gourmet food. Oh, cute. All right, seven through 10, Melbourne and surrounds. Must do, wander Melbourne's stylish laneways and hidden bars. Um, catch a tram to Bayside superb St. Kilda. Watch a game of Aussie Rules Football at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, MCG. Wine tasting in Yarra Valley. Penguin Parade on Phillip Island. And then day 10 through 14, Hobart and the surroundings. So you must do is Saturday Street Market in Salamanca, the Museum of Old and New Art. Um, so you remember Mona, right? Rescued Wildlife at Bonarong Wildlife Sanctuary. Experience convict history at Port Arthur. Day trip to Bruni Island for wildlife, scenery, and gourmet food. All right, scenario, coast to coast. How beautiful. All right, customers have traveled parts of Australia extensively and are eager to see something new. They are yet to experience the West Coast and I've heard that Canberra has a lot to offer. 
they are keen to hire a car and self-drive, as well as visit some wineries. So they have two weeks to spend in Australia. So your customers will now fly into Perth <clears throat> out of, and out of Sydney and take one internal flight. So Perth to Canberra, okay, over here, three and a half hours. Canberra then to the South Coast, 3.3 hour drive. And then South Coast to Sydney, 3.15 minute drive. All right, so before you begin, please review the information for each location. Okay, Margaret River, seen it, three hour drive south of Perth. Margaret River is one of Australia's premier wine regions and is home to stunning beaches and dining experiences. Perth, head to Kings Park for views of the skyline, explore historic Fremantle, take in the sunset over the Indian Ocean at stunning Cotslow Beach. Canberra, Spend some time exploring Canberra's cultural institutions such as the National Museum of Australia and Australian War Mem Mem Memorial before enjoying the Poacher's Way Food and Wine Trail. And then Bondi. Uh, head to Bondi or Manly Beaches for a lazy afternoon watching the waves from a beachside cafe or be active and take in a surfing lesson. And then plan your customer's trip. Over the next activities, you will now plan your customer's trip. So which city will your customers be flying into? Sydney, Carnes, Perth, or Melbourne? Perth. Perth. Do, do, do. Correct. They fly into Perth. Now we're going to plan the order of the trip. All right. Visiting five locations. Once they land in Perth, what would the appropriate be? So wasn't it Perth that moves over to, was it Canberra? Margaret River, I think. Margaret River first. Okay. Yep, Margaret River. And then I think uh, South Coast and Sydney. South Coast and then Sydney. No, you have to do Perth first, right? All right, so we start at Perth. There we go. All right. And then Margaret River, right? Mm -hmm. And then Sydney? No, Canberra. Canberra. South Coast. And Sydney. All right. Perth, Margaret, Canberra. Okay, so Candace said South Coast and Canberra switched. So did you guys try it? Anybody get it right? Which one's right? Candace? I got it right. It's Sydney, yeah, it's, this is right. 12 to 14, Coast South 11 to 12, Margaret 4 to 8. Yeah. Perfect. That's correct. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, everybody got that? Yes, thank you. All right. Yay, teamwork. All right, explore excursions. Uh, four excursions. So you have the Dolphin Watching Cruise, Jervis Bay, renowned for its marine life, including dolphins and seals. Take a cruise around the bay to see these adorable creatures in their habitat. You have a hot air balloon. Canberra is an ideal destination. Experience hot air balloon, incredible oh. views of the mountain ranges as you drift over the city. Rottnest Island. Oh, how cute. Short cruise from Perth or from Montal. Rottnest Island is home to stunning beaches, coral reefs, and the Quokka, a cute native Australian marsupial. How cute is he? Huh? All right. And then Sydney Harbor um, Cruise. Cruise, one of the world's most beautiful harbors in a must-do while um, is a must-do while in Sydney. So many options to choose from, including lunch and dinner cruises. All right, match each excursion to the desired destination. All right, so again, I don't know. Perth. Sydney is a harbor cruise, right? All right. Canberra. Oh. Canberra. Canberra is a hot air balloon. Yeah. Hey. Perth is the Rottnest Island. 
Here we go. And the dolphin is the south coast? Yeah. Very good. Okay, you guys got that? Let's move on. Coast to coast itinerary scenario. You have just completed is an example of an itinerary that takes you from Australia's west coast to the east coast. And review the itinerary below. Perth and surrounds day one through four. You get to view the city Swan River from Kings Park. Sunset Fish and Chips at Cotzalo Beach. Visit historic Fremantle and its Little Creatures Brewery. Day trip to stunning Rots, Rotness Island. Five through eight, Margaret River and the Southwest. Visit Rockingham for dolphin watching and Brusselton beaches. You have wine tasting and beautiful coastline and beaches. Nine through 14, Canberra, South Coast and Sydney. Lots of stuff to do here. Fly to Canberra or drive from Sydney. You have the Australian War Memorial, National Museum of Australia, a lively dining precinct of Broaden and New Action, Nacton, food and wine tasting along the Poacher's Way, drive to Jervis Bay and Hyams Beach, dolphins and whales, take the coastal route back to Sydney, see the sights or head to the beaches to relax. Summary. You now know how many types of accommodation options are available and the importance of considering Australia's climate when creating your Australian itineraries. Finally, you can recommend some of the classic itineraries that can assist you with planning an amazing trip around Australia for your customers. Uh, Australia has an accommodation type to suit everyone with many different options available. Australia has a varied climate, providing the flexibility to create itineraries that align with any customer's preferences at any time of year. And Australia offers many itinerary possibilities. Check out the itinerary section of the Aussie Specialist website for an inspiration. Congratulations, you have now completed building an Australian itinerary course and are only one step away from qualifying as an Aussie specialist. Yay, one more guys, and then you will complete the first part of the course. So congratulations, you just earned another badge. All right, so submit your feedback. You can either close, okay, so I'll close. Marnie, it made me do the feedback before it would uh, give me the badge. Oh, it did? Okay. All right. So if you guys want, go ahead and, and complete the feedback so you can get your badge. Stinking badges. Okay. I literally put very good learning and it gave it to me. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Uh, Samsung, we need to see what, what uh, I don't know which question you're on. So um, if you can, you can go ahead and, and mute if you want. Okay, or if somebody has the right answer for the last one. Okay, ba, ba, ba. where are we now? Do, 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 do. All right, so are we here? I cannot type anything on the feedback portion. <laughs> How do you submit here? Submit oh, okay. feedback. Okay. So make sure you do feedback. It's it's taken a while, looks like. <laughs> go submit okay you all awards if you want and now um launch 
No, I don't want to retake. Okay. So successful. Okay. So where are we now? Uh, uh, uh. We just go back to the agency. All right. Did everybody I had to get back to home to make it start over? Okay. Yeah. So make sure you guys do the core or do the um, evaluation. All right. Dang. Okay, so it looks like we have these to finish. What the heck? Look at these. We could be doing these forever and ever. You see all these? <laughs> I mean, they say they're 30 minutes long. Okay. So. Good Lord. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. That's like, what the heck? Um. So this is two courses, not registered, one course. So all these, I don't know if we just want to go in order and, you know, if we want to um, training course, come and say good day. What do you guys want to do? Go crazy? So if you go to the browse on the top, um, the near the icon where the where the browsers yeah there gotta go there's the training at two. yeah and then courses it just yeah so it'll give you a little less stuff i think so it just tells you what you've done and what you want to do next i think okay um so i don't know you want to just go here for training court in new south wales thank you mary um i think we've completed the main course but uh every, each of these will be i think detailed to what we have already learned so i don't know how detailed yeah. we want to go yeah so i think we did this this is your tips think so. about it huh you're going to go into the training course come and stay come and say good day that's where you start. Mm -hmm. Just Which that's one? the next one because it says introduction to Australia acquired, and then course one class training course. Come and say good day. Where's that at? Um, Thanks, guys. If somebody could tell her. <laughs> a learning catalog where it says all. Just do learning catalog. I think I I see it there. For me, I can see the good day. Thing. Mine says all, and then I have two. I don't have all those courses. Yeah, mine says the next one is Victoria. Two. Just the training course, and that's it. Yeah, right there. Pending Here. registration. You want to do this one? I think that's the only one I have. Okay, I gotta get toggled back before. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. All right, we'll do this one. Hi, Marty. It's Michelle. Hi, Where how are you are guys you? at? I just got back in. Um, we just finished um where we were. Now we're doing training course. Come and say good day. Come and say good day. Okay, I will get in here. Come and say good day. Did you do building an itinerary? Yes. Well, you're done with that one. No. Yeah. Um, I we finished wherever we were. There was like two other courses, and we finished that. So we did the uh, geography. And the itinerary. Okay, so, okay. You guys are just flowing, aren't you? <laughs> How do we get to the training course, come and say the day? Um, Is it through I the learning to catalog? Yeah. Okay. Not just go to empty at the bottom. Yeah, it's, if you arrow down to the bottom, it's down there. Okay. So let me know Thank when everybody's you. here and then we'll launch that course. It says it's only 30 minutes. And then tomorrow we're going to be on Seaborne Cruises and on Saturday we're doing Hyatt. Mine says that the reason why those all those other ones showed up is because we unlocked the courses once we took the intro. Oh, cool. Okay. Perfect. Straight up. All right, let me know when everybody's here and then uh, 
Okay. Okay. Hold on. Let me get there. Let me get there. It's not moving so slow. My computer. It looks like it may have to register again, too. So let's see. Okay. Hang. I got to start out. Um, no worries. You can usually probably just jump back to um to the main page. Yeah, okay. to the main page, and uh, and then just hit um browse. Hey, S S M E S. Well, it says like I finished part one, so I'll just listen and then get into part two when you start. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, sign in. Come on, computer. Come on. It does take forever for these to load. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm signed in already. Okay, now on my page it says uh, top 10, 35% high value, 62% repeat travels. I'm not, I'm not used to this page. Where am I at? Sign in. Yes. Ask Everybody here? Okay. And what's the name of the trainer that we're going to? Uh, come and say good day. Come and say it was, good day. It was down on the bottom for me. Okay. And all these? I know that's it. Take us months to finish them all, huh? <laughs> um, but again, you know, you guys can do it if you wish. I may add some more on later on. I think we already have the schedule for next month. Okay, I'm there. Thank you for waiting. You're welcome. Okay, let's hit start course. And let's do it. All right, so good day, mates. Meet Ruby, our beloved souvenir kangaroo. Ruby's busted out of the gift shop where she lives to help us explore australia country she loves but has yet to see an experience so <clears throat> good day i'm ruby i'm excited for you to join me and i as i travel around australia where the door is always open locals are friendly and surfs up together let's discover some amazing places so you can create incredible down under itineraries your clients simply can't miss many reasons to come and say good day to australia some visitors come to dive the Great Barrier Reef or to meet our famous kangaroos and koalas. Others long to see sacred Aluru in the Northern Territories, Red Center, or taste classic Aussie wines in our world-famous wine regions. Australia is made for big adventures, so let's get going. 
The objective for training today is inspire you to be passionate about selling Australia, remind you of some of Australia's highlights, and provide useful tips and tricks to create iconic Australian itineraries. So let's get started. So we got a little video here. Um... What a beautiful day to go snorkeling. You guys been out to the Great Barrier Reef before? The Great Barrier Reef? Huh? Here we are. <gasps> G'day. Uh, where am I? Australia. And you look like you need a holiday. Show us what you got. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to the Sydney Opera House. It's remarkable. Yep, it's amazing. Whoa! I love it. What is it? A wombat. Oh. <laughs> I see kangaroos. Me too. Come on. G'day, mate. Hear that? We're mates. G'day, my name is Freddie. Wow, there's nothing like Australia. Special, huh? It would make a great movie. <gasps> so what are you waiting for? Come and say g'day. We come from a land down under. All right, so in Australia, good day is the start of every great adventure. Join souvenir kangaroo Ruby, Rosebird, and the toy unicorn Louie. Will Arnett on their on theirs as they explore everything Australia has to offer. Sacred sites, bustling laneways, and every laid-back local in between. They'll discover um, there really is nothing like Australia. All right. So from uh, follow Ruby's journey around the country as she visits some of Australia's key destinations and iconic sites. All right. So you have... Okay, so it doesn't let you. Okay, so you have gone the gorge, Great Barrier Reef, Uluru, Barossa, um, Sydney, the Sea Cliff Bridge, Tasmania, uh, Melbourne, and Coggleslide Beach. And again, it doesn't look like, yeah. Okay. All right, so I've always dreamed I'd travel Australia. There's so much to see from magnificent coastlines to lush green forests. Vibrant modern cities to the ancient outback. There's so many reasons for visitors to come and say good day. Here are some. We'll be taking a closer look in part one. Swim, snorkel, dive, or sail. Queensland Great Barrier Reef. Scale the heights of the Sydney Harbour Bridge in New South Wales. And visit Victoria and explore Melbourne's coolest bars, clubs, restaurants, and laneways. So here's the Great Barrier Reef. Set sail. Okay. Crikey, that's a big reef. I can't believe I'm finally here at the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland. Thousands of things to see. Coral, turtles, boobies. Yes, you heard me. Blue-footed boobies. Birds, okay? Uh, do you know that the Great Barrier Reef is the largest coral reef structure in the world? It's also one of the most diverse ocean habitats on Earth. Among its inhabitants are the Great Eight clownfish, giant clams, monta rays, marori ras, Potato cod, sharks, turtles, and whales. Oh, how cute. All right. People come from all over the world to see this aquatic wonderland where you can swim among multicolored coral and encounter rare species of whales, turtles, and more. more. Others come simply to bask in the Australian sunshine on the soft white sands of tropical island with over 600 islands dotted around the reef. It's easy to find the perfect place to escape. So don't forget your Kasi, which is the Australian for swimsuit. All right. Great Barrier Reef spans 2,300 kilometers, which is 1.43, uh, 1,430 miles. Australia's eastern coastline, Cape York in the north of Queensland to Bundaberg in the south. Six of the world's seven marine turtle species live here and home to 600, 1,600 plus species of fish. Top tip. Uh, Queensland Great Barrier Reef is in a tropical climate, meaning it's warm year round. From May through October, the underwater visibility is at its best and the water is warm enough for swimming. January to March is also special time on reef as it's a turtle hatching season. Uh, so how best to experience the astonishing Australian icon? So many options. Um, depending on where your clients are staying and how adventurous they are, two of my favorite are the Dreamtime Dive and Snorkel. Um, oh, cool. Thank you. All right. So your, your certificate is in the mail, guys. Email. 
Museum of Underwater <laughs> Art, okay? You have the Dreamtime Dive and Snorkel, um, rare opportunity to explore the Great Barrier Reef, accompanied by local Aboriginal guides departing from Carnes in Tropical Far, Queen, North Queensland. Guests embark on a day-long adventure of guided snorkel tours. You have the Museum of Underwater Art at the MUA, located at the Great Barrier Reef in Townsville, uh, North Queensland. Uh, travelers can snorkel or dive to view a series of incredible underwater art pieces that also educate about reef con conservation. Where to stay, Crystal Brook, Brook Flynn, Carnes, and Queensland. Carnes is a very popular destination for travelers headed to the reef. One fantastic uh, um, accommodation option is luxury resort hotel Crystal Brook Flynn with its three levels of restaurants and bars, swimming pool, day spa, and 24-hour gym. Located just steps from Carnes, buzzing Esplanade um, Boardwalk. Top tip, uh, Daintree Rainforest, Queensland. Uh, pair your client's trip to the Great Barrier Reef with a visit to the World Heritage listed Daintree Rainforest, world's oldest tropical rainforest on Queensland northeast coast. A visit to Mossman Gorge Cultural Center is a must at this award-winning ecotourism facility. Conveniently located at the entrance of the Daintree Rainforest, you can book a guided Nagadigo Dream Time walk led by the local indigenous community um, members. All right, Sydney, Warren, and New South Wales. Plan a perfect day out in Sydney, Warren, North New South Wales. Bonza, we've landed in the big city. Sydney, Warren, Warren, in New South Wales is home to the famous Sydney Opera House, um, which has staged many of the world's greatest acts and Sydney Harbor Bridge. You have the bridge climb. Recommend that your clients kickstart their day with an exhilarating experience and 360 degree views of the city, glorious Sydney Harbor. There are a few ways that you can do the legendary Sydney bridge climb, a bucket list item for many. The Barara climb gives its guests unrivaled views of the indigenous landmarks around Sydney Harbor, including Benelong and Barango. Um, while hearing the stories of Australia's First Nations people, dur duration is about three hours. Sydney Opera House. While they're getting their breath back, they could go on the new Sydney Opera House architectural tour. Design lovers uh, especially enjoy learning how the cutting edge blueprints for this famous building changed the face of Sydney Harbor forever. Where to stay? Taronga Zoo Wildlife Retreat. It's time to hop on a ferry and zoom across the waters to Taronga Zoo, Sydney. The Wildlife Retreat at Taronga is an eco re uh, retreat nestled within the zoo. Offers packages including guided tours with zookeepers, three course dinners at the on site restaurant, and exclusive access to a wildlife sanctuary where guests can meet famous Australian animals. On the road in New South Wales, beautiful. Australia is a full, full of mind-blowing road trips. One of the most scenic is the trip from Sydney to south coast of NSW along the Grand Pacific Drive. An hour's drive south of Sydney, you can encounter the iconic Sea Cliff Bridge. This man-made phenomenon makes a stunning sight as you approach and cross over it. The dramatic 665-meter-long bridge floats out over the Tasman Sea, hugging rugged cliff face that runs straight down to the sea, two lanes for traffic and a pedestrian walkway. It's a perfect platform for viewing migrating whales during the season, May through November. Stop at Stanwell Tops for a picnic and to admire the arch architectural wonder of the bridge at your leisure. Dolphin Watch Cruise, while on NSW's South Coast, a highlight for many is doing a Dolphin Watch Cruise in Shoalhaven. Jervis Bay is home to over 100 bottlenose dolphins, so visitors can view dolphins inside the bay year-round. These friendly, curious creatures love to play in the wake of the boat, so it's very common to see them up close and personal on a cruise. Melbourne and Victoria, Melbourne, Victoria, making memories. Okay, Ace, we've arrived in Melbourne, Narm. I love this Victorian city for many reasons, including getting my mouth around some of Australia's tastiest avocado on toast and creamy flat white coffees. 
because if there's one thing Melbournians know, it's cafe culture. With its many galleries, museums, and festivals, Melbourne rivals Canberra in the Australian Capital Territory for the title of Australia's culture capital. Easy to get lost all day in Melbourne's cool laneways, from rooftop bars, courtyard cafes, to basement boutiques, try taking a walking tour of the city's famous graffiti art. All right, so here you go. This is, um, this is a coffee place. Uh, visit the Australian Center for Moving Image, ACMI, in the heart of Melbourne's CBD, one of many cool pop cultural experiences you can have in the city. To explore the inner workings of film, TV, and video games with a diverse range of exhibitions and events. Nighttime is for catching a gig and discovering super cool whining and dining spots, such as Gimlet at Cavendish House. Advise your clients to book well in advance because this fine dining restaurant and bar in the heart of the city made the world's 50 best restaurants 2022 list. Where to stay? Unique hotel in the heart of Melbourne offered modern charm and excellent amenities, including a rooftop oasis with a plunge pool and city views. Top tip. Great Ocean Road, Victoria. If your clients have extra time, another unforgettable Victorian highlight is taking a road trip on the Great Ocean Road. Spanning over 250 kilometers, 150 miles, packed with hidden gems worth taking a detour for, such as wildlife wonders, wildlife sanctuary, set in the spectacular Australian bushland environment, just five kilometers from Apollo Bay. Activities match the experience to the description. All right, snorkel and dive, underwater art pieces, um, snorkel or dive view of series of courts. Okay, nestled within a zoo, and then explore the film and TV. So I probably say here, here, and here. Yep, correct. Okay, everybody got that. Let's move on. Where in Australia can you visit the Wildlife Wonders Wild Sanctuary set in spectacular bushland environment? Of the rainforest. Great ocean, thank you. That is correct. Very good. Thank you very much. Congratulations, you've now completed part one. Come stay for training day. Let's see, that one wasn't too bad, right? All right, ready to go to part two? It's pretty quick, let's try to finish it up. Two thirds. Ugh. All right, part two. Everybody ready? Let's get started. Good day, mate. Loading. Huh? Mine's mine's loading. Okay. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> but if you want, you can just listen, and then by the time we get to the test, you should be there. Um, so good day. Hope you're still buzzing from all those flat white coffees in Melbourne because we've got heaps more to explore. Let's go. In this section, we're going to check out some amazing highlights of South Australia, Western Australia, Tasmania, which I guarantee your clients will love. Take a legendary train journey from South Australia to Northern Territory on the gone. Go wine tasting in two of Australia's best wine regions. Check out Western Australia's riverboat, Riverside capital, Perth, and its famous beaches. And soak up natural beauty and shuck fresh oysters in Tasmania. All right, the gone. Except that's a train, right? All aboard. Righto. It's time to put the billy on and make a cup of tea, that is. Uh, because we're about to take a long, spectacular train journey into the heart of the outback. Uh, if your clients want a truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience, you can confidently recommend they book a, a, on the gone. The iconic train trip runs between Adelaide, uh, Tarndamu, 
in South Australia to tropical top end of Darwin, Gulamordjan, in the Northern Territory, uh, covering um, almost 3,000 kilometers and 1,851 miles. Once on board, guests will enjoy private cabins, attentive service, fine dining, and the opportunity to make new friends over cocktails in the Outback Explorer Lounge. Here you go. Top tip. Add off-train experiences and tailored holiday packages to your client's itineraries to create the perfect trip, including exploring outback uh, towns like Alice Springs and Catherine, or taking a scenic helicopter flight over stunning Kakadu and Nitmaluk National Parks in the Northern Territory. All right, Barossa, South Australia, one of the world's best wine uh, regions. Well, I fancy a drink, how about you? Let's head to Barossa Valley together to taste some of Australia's best drop. Cheers. Beautiful Barossa Valley in South Australia is home to more than 170 wineries, 80 cellar doors, and some of the oldest continuously producing vines in the world. Many famous names in wine have a home here and it can be very hard to say no to a deep, rich Barossa red. In fact, why even try? Uh, Sepatilfield Wine. Founded in 1851, Sepatilfield's Wines is arguably the Barossa's most iconic winery. The vineyard produces a plethora of award-winning wines, which can be counted among the world's best, including the sublime 100-year-old Para Vintage Tawny on a Taste Your Birth Year tour. Guests can sip vintage tawny from the year of their birth straight from the barrel. How about bike about? Cycling the Barossa Trail also makes for very many magical moments among its 40 kilometers, 25 miles of cellar doors, cafes, picturesque villages. Wind your way through the beautiful countryside, indulging in the finest wine, cheese, and chocolate the region has to offer uh, with bike about. Where to stay? Kingsford, the Barossa, Barossa Valley, South Australia. Set in 225 acres of beautiful Barossa Valley landscape, just 45 minutes from Adelaide, Kingsford the Barossa offers sophisticated, indulgent, overnight escapes, and a leading wine collection. Its Orlina restaurant treats diners to divine culinary experience featuring the wonderful flavors and produce of Barossa. All right, Cottesloe Beach, Western Australia. Surf's up in Western Australia. Got your swimmers. That's also Australian for swimsuit because it's time to soak up the famous Aussie sunshine. Western Australia's spectacular white sand Cotslow Beach is one of Perth's um, Burlow's Burlow, Burlow, most popular beaches. Tourists and locals alike flock here to swim, snorkel, sail, and surf. How do we get there? Cotslow Beach lies halfway between Perth and Fremantle. Less than a half hour drive from Perth city center. Buses and trains run regularly from Perth Elizabeth Quay bus station and Perth station. The Bush to Beach Trail is 16 kilometers walking and cycling trail that starts in Perth and finishes near Cotslow Beach. Okay, so there you can click on those. Sun, sand, surf, turf, what to do? Well, Maine Cotslow Beach is perfect for swimming and walking while surfers, snorkeling and kite surfers head to South Cotslow with its rocky reefs and cliffs. Peter's Pool at North Cotslow Beach is another great spot for snorkeling and trying to spot endangered leafy sea dragons. Not a confident surfer, surfing thank you. Um, surfing Lessons Cotslow is a family owned and operated business that offers classes for all ages and abilities. Should your clients be visiting in March, they won't want to miss a sculpture by the sea, which transforms the beach into a vast outdoor art gallery of awe-inspiring sights. Dinner booking at a restaurant around Marine Parade is the best way to savor what some say are the world's best sunsets looking out over the Indian Ocean, not to mention enjoy some of the region's amazing seafood. Uh, Perth, Western Australia. More to do and see around Perth, Western Australia. You have the Segway Tours. While in Perth, your clients might want to take a tour with Segway Tours and cruise around Western Australia's beautiful landscapes while hearing stories about the region's rich history and boom times. 
Margaret River Discovery. South of Perth lies Western Australia's Margaret River, a small town with a big reputation for its craft breweries, wineries. The Margaret River Discovery offers personalized tours to help your clients discover the area's hidden gems, including winery and river tours. Where to stay? Sam Samphire Rottness, Rottness Island at Western Australia. A visit to Rottness Island just offshore from Perth to see Australia's famous <coughs> quokas, known as the happiest animals on earth for good reason, is a highlight for many visitors. Immerse yourself in the island life at the luxury resort. Enjoy ocean views, beachside cocktails, incredible seafood, and sumptuous surrounds. All right, Tasmania. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, time out in Tasmania. Okay. Uh, Tasmania, you beauty. How fresh is the air here? Get your phones and cameras ready because the state is packed with Instagram-worthy moments from its fields of bright purple lavender to abundant native wildlife and rugged beaches. Kangaroos, koalas, wombats, platypus, they're all here, including the infamous Tasmanian devil. Marie Island Walk. Uh, Tasmania's multi-award winning four-day Maria Island Walk is one of the great walks of Australia, brings together expert guided tours, convict tales, and sumptuous local Tasmanian fare. With options for porter service and comfortable accommodation, the entire island is a very special place for watching wildlife, including many rare and unusual bird species. Where to stay? You have the Sapphire Frasinet, Tasmania. Overlooking the peninsula, Sapphire Frasinet is an all-inclusive luxury lodge, offers unforgettable experiences. Guests can shuck oysters at the uh, working oyster farm in a picturesque setting at the foot of the Hazard Mountains, and then enjoy them, um, and then enjoy them fresh from the sea while learning while the region's oysters are world famous. And then activity. Okay, so. Uh, where can you learn to surf, swim, and snorkel, sip fine wines? I know that's was this one. Tasmania is the animals. Animals. The, yeah. There. And, and yeah, then, that cut. That's the beach where you beach. snorkel. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So Maria Island, Barossa, and the beach. Very good. All right. At what at what Barossa winery can you taste your birth year? Is that this one? What do you remember? I'm going to try this and see. Because I couldn't pronounce it. Yay, that's correct. All right, congratulations. Now one more and then we will be done for the day. Pretty quick and easy, right? All right, so either complete it or close your player. So we'll go ahead and close the player and then it should pop up. Maybe, hopefully, yes. Launch. Okay, one more. Let's do it. Again, join me for vouchers tonight at 5 p.m., same place um, on the Zoom. Tomorrow we are uh, doing Seaborn. I don't know. I think we'll finish it, but if not, we'll finish it next week. And then we're learning about Hyatt with Apple Leisure Group on Saturday. All right, looks like a short course. Let's do it. Welcome to the Come and Say Good Day training course part three. Good day. We made it to the last section, but there's still so much for us to see and do in the awe-inspiring Australian Capital Territory and Northern Territory. Are you ready for your next adventure? A uh, taste of what we'll encounter here is world famous museums, art galleries in the Australian Capital Territory, culture capital, Canberra, mighty monolith that is ancient, sacred Uluru in the Northern Territory, stunning Nitmaluk Gorge of Nitmaluk National Park, Northern Territory. You have uh, Australian Capital Territory here, okay? Australia's capital city, Canberra, in the Australian Capital Territory, packs a big punch in its relatively small size. Fancy a tour of Parliament House, Canberra the place, but let me tell you, there's more to see here than politicians. Balloons aloft, Canberra is one of the world's only capital cities that you can float over in a hot air balloon. Your clients can take off with the sunrise with balloons aloft to enjoy a bird's eye view of the city's architectural wonders before a champagne toast at the Hyatt 
Hotel Canberra. Hi, we'll learn about that on Saturday. Natural um, National Museum of Australia, Canberra offers so many amazing arts and culture all experiences for visitors. One of its many notable destinations is the National Museum of Australia, where Australia's unique stories come to life. Museum is located in the shores of Canberra's spectacular uh, Lake Bur Burley Griffin, the scenic centerpiece of the city. Whether your clients are into rowing, sailing, kayaking, paddleboarding, or fishing, many ways to enjoy this beautiful lake and its surrounds. Um, and it surrounds both on and off the water. Canberra is also a popular spot for foodies, thanks to the diverse mix of dining, farmers markets, and local artisanal pro producers. All right. Adventures in the Northern Territory. Stroop, that's taken my big breath away. What are you looking at? Only the awe inspiring Nipmaluk Gorge in the National Park in the ter Northern Territory. Quite possibly one of the most incredible sites on earth. It's famous for its towering sandstone cliffs and aboriginal rock art. Um, the tours and National Park Northern Territory, many ways to experience this astonishing area. For a peaceful paddle, your clients can hire a kayak or take an immersive canoe trip to the Nitmuluk uh, Tours, which offers a range of cruising, canoeing, helicopter flight tours, and river safaris. All tours uh, run by Aboriginal people from the local Jawan clan who have extensive knowledge of the area, its rich history and fascinating tradition. Where to stay? Sikada uh, Lodge, Catherine, Northern Territory. The Sikada Lodge is the Northern Territory's outback town of Catherine is another fantastic place to book a stay for your clients. This luxurious eco lodge is run by local Jawan people and perfect spot to immerse oneself in the area's culture and landscape. Each room features indigenous artwork by local artists. Uluru Northern Territory. Welcome to the heart of the Red Center in the Northern Territory. Hold on to your hats, speeding on through the outback. Hopefully you've got yourself a good Akuba hat by now because this truly is a sunburnt country. The vast out back region known as the Red Center is the Northern Territory spans an enormous expanse of dusty red desert, thrilling mountain ranges, and deep gorges. With the township of Alice Springs at its center, the Red Center is best known as the homeland of sacred Aboriginal site, Uluru Ayers Rock, and nearby Katajuta, the Olgas. A group of 36 immense red rock domes, seeing these majestic rock formations rise from the earth is truly a life-changing experience. Uluru is the largest sandstone monolith in the world, standing 348 meters high, and um, which is 1,142 feet foot high, measures 9.4 kilometers, 5.8 miles in circumference. Uluru and Kata Chuta are spiritual, sacred places of knowledge to the local Ang Anguru people who have lived here more than 22,000 years. This knowledge is present and standing here, passed down by the people. Uh, the Ayers Rock Resort uh, oh. means beautiful dune, lo um, local Onion language, which enca encapsulates the magic of this unforgettable fine dining experience under the southern desert sky. Guests enjoy an exclusive four-course dinner at this open-air restaurant with magnificent views of Uluru and the distant domes of Kata Juta. Each course is infused with ancient native herbs and spices. What is the largest sandstone formation in the world? Uluru, Northern Territory, Black Mountain, or the Bungle Bungles, Western Australia? Uluru. The first one. Uluru. The myth. That is correct. You guys are pretty smart. Match the experience. All right. So Tala Ru, balloon and the tours. The balloon is the enjoy the bird's eye for the first one. Okay. And then the Nimtukuk is the take an immersive kayak. <laughs> yeah. And, and that. the dining <laughs> is the Tali Ryu. Right. Okay, perfect. Very good. We did really good. We didn't miss any, guys. All right, come back and say good day. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this trip through a few of Australia's many amazing highlights as much as I have. This country is so big and beautiful that we've covered here, uh, that what we've covered here is merely a taster. 
so much more to see and do in this remarkable land with its abundant beauty, iconic wildlife, multicultural food scene, and ancient Aboriginal culture, not to mention meeting the friendly locals. Other highlights your clients will love, soaking up the sun on the world-renowned stretch of sand that is Surfer's Paradise on Queensland's Gold Coast, theme parks, shopping, beachside dining, and ancient rainforest are other famous highlights of the Gold Coast. Watching the Penguin Parade on Phillip Island, 90 minutes from Melbourne in Victoria, which is home to the largest little penguin colony in the world. Go swimming uh, with dolphins, explore beautiful hinterland villages, and enjoy fine organic dining in the iconic beach town of Byron Bay, and so much more, but we will leave that for another day. So again, congratulations, everybody. Hold on one moment. Hey there, I'm just finishing my training. Are you, are you there? Okay, are you going to be available in about a half hour? Just let me know when you're free. No, it's not urgent. Okay. Okay, okay thank you. Bye-bye. Sorry, that was our five-star platinum Charles Lee. All right, congratulations. You've now completed the Come and Say Good Day training course. You got your badge. Again, congratulations, everybody. Um, you know, as you see, there's plenty and plenty and plenty of uh, um, training on Australia. So uh, we may pick up a few more coming up. Um, but right here, view all your rewards, check your emails. Okay, so there's all your badges and stuff. Okay, um, so Samsung, um, uh, if you have the worry tiji, worry is the um, dining. Um, the first part was, do you guys, can you help? Um, what was the answers to the last one, guys? Sorry. All right. So again, um, congratulations, everybody, on your courses, um, your completed learning. If somebody could put the answers for the last test on there, that would be great. I don't know if it's you summary if it'll show it here. I don't think so. All right. Do, 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 do. Um, I don't want to retake it. Does anybody have the answers on there? Hands class detail. Click here. I think the the balloon was the carry. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Canberry, I think. And then that was the first one. And the second one was uh, Tours, Nimic something Tours. And the last one is the last one. Uh, the Wari or something. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So um, again, congratulations. Um, hopefully we'll see you tonight on vouchers. If not, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow on Seaborn. Again, if you haven't um, completed Seaborn, we're on our third one right here. Um, or the the fifth one or whatever we've already done part um a couple parts right here seaborn and seaborn um it's under one source which is the same as princess and then uh on uh saturday we're learning about hyatt hotels okay so hopefully you guys can join us um i have them recorded again remember you're in business for yourself but not by yourself stay plugged in let's have some fun and we'll be getting the schedule out um for next month, uh, within the next few days. Okay. All right, guys, have a great day. Thank you for joining me. Have a, a wonderful weekend. If I don't see you on the next few days. Um, and thank you again. Appreciate you guys. All right. Thank you. Talk soon. Thank you. Thank you guys for the facility. Thank you. Over here to the